Welcome back to our Simplify IT with Intersight series. In this video, we are going to cover our different deployment options. Now in the past, we would have to break up the management of our solution into multiple administrative domains, or we would have to use an automation tool to be able to talk to each one of those different administrative domains. By bringing all of our equipment under one umbrella, it gives us a better visibility and ease of management through a single administrative dashboard. So let's simplify with Intersight. The first deployment option that I'd like to talk about is our SaaS, or Software as a Service solution. What it allows us to do is communicate with common devices that we're gonna see in our data center, like our unified compute system, or a standalone server running SIMC, the Cisco Integrated Management Controller, or Hyperflex, or even a third-party utility and talk back to the Cisco Intersight dashboard. This is gonna give us the ability to see all of our equipment under one roof. Now, one thing that I do wanna mention here is that there is information flowing back and forth between the Intersight dashboard and each one of these devices, so they are sharing management information. Now, if we go to the Intersight connected virtual appliance, what this gives us the ability to do is have an on-site device in the form of a virtual machine that can do the same thing. It can communicate with each one of our third-party devices and our UCS, SIMC, and Hyperflex devices, but then that on-site tool or that on-site virtual machine will be talking back to Intersight. Now, why do we want to do this? This is so that we can download, for instance, firmware from the Cisco Intersight dashboard and push it very quickly down to our on-site devices. Now, if you have some security concerns, we're going to take a look at the private virtual appliance. Now, that private virtual appliance does not actually talk back to the Cisco Intersight dashboard. This is in the event that you do not want your management information getting out to the rest of the world but it'll operate the same way as our SAS and CVA deployments. We will still have an on-site virtual machine that is going to be talking to our UCS, SIMC, and Hyperflex and third-party devices, but giving us that very similar dashboard look and feel as though if you were using your SAS or CVA appliances. Next, I want to talk about the differences and similarities between the SAS dashboard, the connected virtual appliance, and the private virtual appliance. First of all, the form factor, the SAS dashboard, that lives at Intersight.com. So that's a, that's a cloud deployment. With the CVA and the PVA, this comes to you as an OVA file that you can load up and run as a virtual machine. Minimum licensing. For Intersight SAS to be able to essentially manage any device, you have to have your base license. Now, for the CVA and PVA, you do have to have the essentials license. The deployment scale, for SAS, there is no limit. This is a cloud offering. With the CVA and PVA, we're looking at a roughly up to 5,000 managed servers. Now, the connectivity to Cisco, what does this mean? We're talking about, does the solution talk back to Intersight.com? Well, obviously the SAS deployment does. The connected virtual appliance, that one will also, but then the private virtual appliance, it will not. Next, authentication. We support SSO for both the Intersight and on-prem devices, but no, with the SAS deployment, it gives us the ability to use our Cisco ID. With the on-site deployment, obviously we can use our on-site LDAP Active Directory authentication. Data collection, so Intersight, the SAS dashboard, Intersight.com, will collect all data from our devices and populate it in the management dashboard. Same thing with the connected virtual appliance by default, but you can manage what you do and do not want to collect. With the private virtual appliance, there is no communication between the on-prem virtual machine and the Intersight SAS dashboard. Licensing, where are we gonna get licensing? From our smart dashboard. And then other differences, you'll note that new features with the connected virtual appliance uh, may not be supported. With private virtual appliance, the new features, you're going to actually have to download yourself and push the new features down. Either way, with these appliances, the new features will have to be manually updated. 
And then last but not least, do they support an application programmable interface? Yes, all three options do support an API connection for automation.